So far we've had a chance to look at a built-in sequence type. Let's now develop a sequence type of our own, just using pairs. They're called recursive lists. So a recursive list is a way of implementing a list of arbitrary length using just pairs. And the way you break up a sequence into two parts is to create a recursive list out of just some first element and then the rest of the list, where rest is also a recursive list. That's a constructor for recursive lists, and then there are two selectors. First gives you back the first element of recursive list S, and rest returns the rest of the elements. Now, we're going to establish two behavior conditions, just as we do for any abstract data type. If a recursive list S is constructed from a first element F and another recursive list R, then first should give me back F and rest should return R, which is also a recursive list. So what's going on here? Well, we're actually going to use two element tuples in order to represent our R list, and we have a way to visualize those. So here's what we'll actually build. We could implement recursive lists using any type of pairs, but two element tuples are built in, so that seems like a good place to start. We want to represent the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, which has a length of 4, and we're going to do it with the following structure. So the whole sequence is this object, which at its element at index 0 is the first element of the sequence we're representing. And the second element of this tuple is the rest of the list, 2, 3, 4. So we're breaking up this sequence into 1 and then everything else, 2, 3, 4. And likewise, 2, 3, 4 is broken up into 2 and then 3, 4, etc. So we call it recursive list because the rest of a recursive list is a recursive list. And that's a form of recursion. So a recursive list is just a pair. The first element of the pair is the first element of the list. And the rest is the second element of the pair. At the very end, we need to stop our recursive list because sequences have finite length. So we're going to use none to represent the empty list because it's a convenient value. Let's actually implement this. So keep this picture in your mind as we write some code. So we're going to define the recursive list abstract data type, which will have some representation for the empty R list. I said that was going to be none. And then we have to define our constructor, which takes in the first element and then the rest of the list. And it will just bundle those together into a pair. Next, we have the selector first, which takes in an R list and returns the first element, which is always going to be also the first element of the pair. And the rest of the R list is return S1. So I've now defined a new abstract data type. It looks similar to the rational numbers that we saw before, but it's going to be used to represent something entirely different. So the important next step that I have is I put in an abstraction barrier. Actually, I mentioned that was pretty important. Let's make it a robust, serious abstraction barrier. Mm. Okay. So here implements the recursive list, abstract data type. Everything I write from now on is going to use these three functions and this constant in order to define list operations and to define instances of lists. So let's create a list. Let's create counts is an R list where the first element is one. And what's the rest of the list? Well, it's two, three, four, that example that we saw before. And that's how we create it. And let's have a second one, which just alternates between the numbers one and two.
It also is four elements long. And so the rest of the list that contains just the final element is the empty R list. So what have I done so far? Well, I've created an abstract data type, and then I've created two names for two recursive lists. Now, if we show their value, we see their implementation. But we can also use the list operations, the selectors, in order to get out their parts. So I could get the rest of counts, which is just two, three, four. Or if I wanted to find the three in there, then I would say, what's the rest of counts? Actually, I need the rest of that. And that gives me three, four. And then if I get the first element of that, that gives me the number three. So I've just done element selection for the element at index two by getting the rest, and then the rest, and then the first. Okay, alts is another recursive list that we've created. I can even put both of these together into a recursive list, right? I could say both is alts is, is an, I could say both is an R list where the first element is alts. And then the rest is an R list where the first element is counts. And there are only two elements. So there's both. Conceptually, it's just an R list with two elements, the first of which is itself an R list, alts, and the second is also an R list, counts. So let's try to come up with an expression that gives me the number three back starting out with both. So I'm going to tell you that it's one of these four options. First rest, rest, first rest, both, or first rest, first rest, rest, both, or first rest, first rest, first, both, first rest, 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 first, both, or first, first, rest, rest, first, both. Take a look at those. I'll tell you which it is in a moment. Let's try this one out. That gave me the number three. How did it do it? Well, I started out with both, and then I took the rest of both. That gave me a recursive list where the first element was counts. So if I took the first of the rest of both, well, that gave me the original counts that I was looking for, at which point I could take the rest of that, and the rest of that, and the first element of that, and get the number three just as I had before. 